Hey guys, how are you doing? Mr. Patrick here. I hope you're doing great. I actually had a pretty good week. Um, I did some parkour in the woods, got some good feedback on one of the toughest projects I've had at work. So uh, uh, God's been really good. Uh, please, if you get a chance, share how you're doing. I'd love to hear it. I know everyone else would. Um, or uh, feel free to have your parents call or email me to talk about it. Or I'm hoping to do a Zoom call next week and you can save it for then. Just uh, I'd love to hear your stories to so start thinking about them. Today, I'm actually going to talk about a story most of us have heard before um, and give you a little bit more background on it and another sort of call to action. Sorry about my hair. It's just so long. Anyway, uh, we're going to be in Matthew 14. And in Matthew 14, Jesus gets on a boat to go to the middle of nowhere because his friend, John the Baptist, has just been killed. And he wants to go to a remote place to sort of just be by himself. Um, he was really sad, uh, understandably, and just wanted some alone time. Have you ever been sad and just wanted to be alone? I know I have. Uh, things have happened, things have come up, and I just wanted a chance to just be with my own thoughts. Well, that's not exactly how it worked out. Turns out, 5,000 people found out where he was going and followed him on foot. So Jesus was in a boat, he was in the water, he was going somewhere. And a group of people from a bunch of different places got together and started walking where they thought Jesus was heading. Um, what do you think Jesus did when that happened? Like, how would you react if you were trying to be alone? I know that at times when I've tried to be alone and people have followed me, I uh, kind of hid from them. I was younger. I'm like, I'm just going to stay hidden. I'm not going to answer their calls. I'm going to stay by myself. But Jesus did something else. Uh, Matthew 14:14 14, 14 says Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. He had compassion. And compassion is a really strong feeling we get that comes from really deep inside of us. The Greek word that this comes from is like deep inside us, buried, a really strong emotion that comes from as far within us as we can get. And it's not just you know, feeling love towards someone, it actually calls us to do something. And what it called Jesus to do was heal their sick. He saw the people and he had this deep feeling of wanting to take care of them. And then he took care of them. So he put aside his own need for solitude to take care of the people that had, I would say rudely followed him where he didn't want them to be, but he wouldn't put it that way. They needed him, they needed something from him that only he could deliver, and so he took care of them. Now, they stayed for a long time. This took a, um, a while, hours. They'd already been traveling most of the day. Um, and it got late, and people started getting really, really hungry. And this presented a problem to the disciples. Uh, these people needed to eat. So that later, the disciples came to Jesus so he could fix this, so he could take care of it, he could send them away. Uh, uh, Matthew 14 verses 15 through 18 that evening the disciples came to him and said this is a remote place and it's already getting late send the crowds away get them out of here send them away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves but Jesus said that isn't necessary you feed them the disciples answered back but we only have five loaves of bread and two fish they answered, bring them here, he said. Then Jesus blessed the food and gave it back to the disciples. And guess what? I bet, I bet you know the answer, I bet you know what happened. Did they run out of food? No, they didn't run out of food. Everyone ate as much as they wanted and there was still food left over. Twice now, in that same day, Jesus put aside his desire to be alone, to take care of people. But there's one other thing that I want to draw your attention to. Jesus didn't do all this by himself. Yes, Jesus is the one by himself uh, through the power of his father that multiplied the loaves of bread and, and uh, the fish and was able to feed the people. But he told the disciples, you feed them. Jesus provided what was needed, but he didn't hand it out himself and he didn't tell everyone to get in line and come get your food. He was teaching the disciples to do some of that work. Um, he gave it to them and they had to hand it out to those people. And 
the disciples, for possibly very reasonable things, didn't want to feed the crowd. They just asked Jesus to send them away. They didn't have enough food. What happens if they run out of food and they can't help everyone? Will people get mad? Will they be upset? What, what's going to happen? Just, just send them away. It'll be easier. But that wasn't what Jesus wanted to do. Jesus took care of those excuses, and he made it possible for the disciples to be compassionate, to act out that love, to, to do the work. He made that possible. And then the disciples had to put in that work. Handing out fish and bread to 5,000 people is not an easy task. It probably took a very long time. And they were probably still worried a little bit as they got through more and more people and realized we should be out of fish and bread by now. But they still did it. They still showed compassion, that action of compassion, not just the feeling, but actually doing it. And it's the same today. Jesus didn't tell the disciples, oh, I'll take care of this. I will multiply the bread and the fish and give it to you to give to the people. He just did it, he blessed it, and then sent them to work. We might not always know how to help people. We might not always know what being compassionate looks like, if it's gonna be helpful, what it's gonna do. But when Jesus gives us that deep feeling, it's our job to act on it. And that's what I want you to focus on this week. As you go through your days, look for places where you are called to show compassion, where you're called to do something for others. And being fully truthful and transparent, that can be hard. Like, really hard. Doing things for people is not always easy. And it's easier to have compassion for some people than others. People that you agree with, people that you like, people that you understand where they're coming from. It's real easy to have compassion for them. But people that might be different than you, believe different than you, hold different beliefs, look different, sometimes it's harder to have compassion for those people. And that's where we need to work on ourselves and where we need God to come in and teach us and show us how to be compassionate and help us with that. Luckily, we have Jesus who can take care of those excuses, just like he took care of the lack of food he can take care of our lack of compassion for the people. All we have to do is ask. Just, I'm gonna pray real fast uh, to help this lesson sink in, and then I'll let you go. Jesus, thank you for showing your compassion every day to me and blessing all of us. Please help us to see everyone with love like you do. Help us to see opportunities to be compassion and act out that love and help us to do it even when it doesn't seem possible to people that we have trouble loving and being compassionate towards. Thank you for this time, God. Please be with us uh, wherever we're at right now. Thank you for everything you do, God. Amen. Thanks, guys. I hope to see you really soon, and hopefully we'll get to meet on Zoom uh, sometime this coming week. Thanks.